Hello, I'm Darrell Holland with AGI and this is your Woodsman Tip of the Month. Having hunted around the world and taken literally thousands of photographs, I'm absolutely amazed at the poor quality when it is my turn to stand in front of the lens. So many people are really ignorant of what a good quality picture is and should be. Let's take a few minutes and go over the proper way to shoot a photograph of a hunter in the field. It's not necessary that we have expensive camera gear, a good film camera, or better yet, new digital technology is really the way to go when taking photographs outdoors. The digital camera allows us to see our results in the field and we can make minor adjustments in an attempt to obtain the perfect picture. Let's look now at some examples of quality photographs that I've taken of my son Jonathan on his early hunting career. Jonathan is 14 now and we're going to show you pictures of six different deer that Jonathan has harvested from Oregon to Montana. Photograph number one is with Jonathan with a real nice heavy horned buck that he killed in eastern Oregon this year. A range 247 yards. I didn't really like Jonathan shooting that far away but he assured me that he had a perfect rest and did a marvelous shot on the buck. The buck ran about 80 yards. This is a real good composition of a Frodo showing the hunter walking up on the big game animal. Make sure that your camera is low and we've got plenty of blue sky around the hunter making sure that the horns are silhouetted against the sky as well. Picture number two is again of another big buck that Jonathan shot two years ago in eastern Oregon. Like the gunfighters of the Old West, a real edge is having the sun to your back. And we can see how the sun really helps highlight the photograph and gives us those gorgeous colors. This particular buck was shot at about 80 yards, a perfect neck shot by Jonathan. Note the heavy massive horns in the details. Again, the photographer was down low, shooting up at the hunter and his prize trophy, silhouetting the horns against the blue sky. Our next photograph is Jonathan's first mule deer that he shot in Montana a couple of years ago. A real nice, healthy, mature four-point. Jonathan shot that deer perfectly through the heart at about 125 yards. The blue rifle you see really helps spice up the photograph. That's Jonathan's 6mm XC. Jonathan loads his own ammunition, a Nosler 90 grain ballistic tip at about 3,000 feet a second. It's nice that we've centered the hunter between the horns, giving it a real nice glowing remembrance of a boy's first buck. This is another picture of Jonathan's Montana buck with he and I in the photograph. We did our best to kind of stage the photo, giving a little photographic lesson here to the person who was taking the picture. Again, they're shooting from a low position. We've got the hunter and the animal silhouetted against the blue sky so we don't detract from the nice horns of that mule deer buck. This is another nice buck that Jonathan shot in Montana a few years ago. Note the smile on the happy hunter. Jonathan made a nice stock and shot this buck at about 125 yards. It's real important that we see that the hunter is looking at the camera or at the big game animal. Don't get something that looks distracted to where the photo is not properly staged. Again, the horns were silhouetted against the sky. We filled the frame with the hunter and the deer. You don't have to get out the magnifying glass in order to see who's in the photograph. You can also see reflection on Jonathan's glasses indicating that we used a fill flash. Many times a fill flash is an important key in obtaining a successful photograph. If it's overclassed and cloudy, you may need to turn on your flash. Again, this is a great advantage of the digital camera because it allows the photographer to view the shot, making sure that we have indeed obtained the perfect photograph. This is a picture of Jonathan's first blacktail buck taken down around the Medford area in Oregon. This particular photograph made the front cover of Oregon Hunter's Youth Magazine. You can see the big smile on Jonathan's face. It would have been a little nicer in retrospect to have tried to silhouette the horns against the sky, but we did a reasonable job of bracketing Jonathan in and around the horns. We've got a good view of the rifle in the photograph. It was really getting late in the afternoon and we were indeed rushed to take these photographs. We did use the fill-in flash indicated by the glossy shine on the deer's eyes and the reflection in Jonathan's glasses. 
with digital Photoshop, you can go in and clean these photographs up, taking away the glare, which again is a distinct advantage in digital photography over film photography. This is a photograph of a massive three-point that Jonathan shot over in eastern Oregon. Note the whitetail-like main beams on the mule deer, very unusual. Very heavy, massive horns. Jonathan is using his knee to help support the deer's head. Another vital thing to keep in mind is that we owe a certain amount of respect to the animal when taking their photograph. Make sure that if there's a lot of blood on the animal that we do our best to clean it up. Do not leave the tongue hanging out from the animal. This is really a sign of disrespect for the trophy animal that we've just harvested. We are trying to have proud and memorable memories of the animal and the hunt that we have for future reference. And also when we're showing these photographs to other people who may not be hunters, they're not turned off by the poor display of our photography. And our last photograph, this was taken late, late in the afternoon. Jonathan had made about a 200 yard stock on this mule deer and we had some complications in the shot and shot him pretty late in the day during legal limit however and by the time we made it back to the truck to get our camera it was indeed getting dark. But by using filling flash and situating the hunter with his trophy we still managed to take a nice photograph. Always try and keep the horns silhouetted against the black sky, the illumination from the flash will help bring out the detail in the deer's horns. Again, we've got a great happy hunter with deer number six. Jonathan Holland is really off to a good start as a young hunter. Anytime that we take young hunters in the field, it's really important that we set a good example for them, showing the proper methods to hunt, the respect for our big game animals, as well as the great outdoors. Do not tolerate littering. Do not tolerate any unsportsmanlike actions. Remember, these younger generations will be representing us as we're old and gray, and we hope that we've done a good job in preparing them for an exciting and enjoyable future in the great outdoors. I'm Daryl Holland, and that's your Woodsman Tip of the Month.